When I was young, I used to dream of this perfect life. I wanted to be a super professional, independent woman. As I walked into a skyscraper in some big city and took an elevator to the millionth floor where I would do my professional Barbie job. And eventually I would come home to a professional dream house filled with perfect pottery barn. This is Make It A Pair, and I'm your host, Marlena Compton. In our last podcast, I was pointing towards some pretty big plans I had for myself this year and in general, which is nothing new for me. As the child of two parents who were workaholics running a family business, I also consider myself a workaholic. Although I'm somewhat in recovery, I'm really good at having a big goal breaking it down into smaller, more easily accomplished pieces and executing the shit out of it. This is how I've organized conferences, trained for half marathons, run a business, completed not one, but two undergraduate degrees and a master's and survived for 20 years in tech. I'm not the prettiest. I'm not the smartest. Well, Okay, I am pretty smart, but I know how to pace myself and how to keep going. This sounds pretty great, doesn't it? After all, we live in a society where there is so much propaganda about working hard, hustle culture, and how this is the path to the American dream. And sometimes this really is a gift, but sometimes in This is what I've been in the thick of learning over the past few years. The only thing working hard does for you is run you into the ground. This is how you do a shit ton of work and end up with nothing to show for it. And I have to admit, sometimes it really feels like that's where I am. I mean, how hard did I work in tech? Just the massive amount of hours I spent working and learning. Like I would get up at 5.30 AM consistently to write code or do do schoolwork or work on my web development skills. At the end, I did not make a billion crazy internet dollars. I did not pass go. In fact, I started rejecting tech jobs and overwork without even knowing what I was doing. It's been hard to reorient myself and what I consider success away from having a lot of money or a fancy tech job. And I also have to stop here and acknowledge my own privilege as a white woman who benefits from generational wealth and privilege. I started with more. I got a college education without worrying about how I was gonna pay for it. And this doesn't mean that I don't have things that I want in life, but my goals have just changed so much. When I was young, I used to dream of this perfect life I would have when I grew up. I wanted to be a super professional, independent woman wearing an Ancline pantsuit Hey, this was the late 80s, early 90s, and Ancline was top tier. So I'd be wearing my Ancline pantsuit as I walked into a skyscraper in some big city and took an elevator to the millionth floor where I would do my professional Barbie job. And eventually I would come home to a professional dream house filled with perfect pottery barn. What I think I was really doing when I imagined this perfect life for myself was trying to be what I thought my parents wanted. I know there are plenty of us out there whose parents relentlessly pushed us to do more, to be more, to acquire more, which in some ways, given this hyper-capitalistic show that we live in, can be seen as survival. But... I was also a latchkey child growing up in the 80s with parenting that was 
I'll be polite and say minimal, even though the results my parents expected were like doctor, lawyer, accountant, all A's, all the time. Really, all I ever wanted was parents who loved me, who adored me, and who spent quality time with me. This resulted in dreams of how I could be a child worthy of that love, even though I was and I am, as we all are, worthy of love without good grades and without any kind of stellar professional life. But as a child, I skewed every single dream I had towards that vision of perfection. I was also dissociating from a family and social life fraught with loneliness and discord. This was in my childhood, in my teens, but I never really took the time to update my dreams. The vision of perfection never changed, which made the crash of my tech career even more painful when I just couldn't do it anymore. As I was exiting tech and working on my business, I worked with a business and marketing coach who had me describe my perfect day and my perfect life. What would I do in that day? Where would I be living? What would that feel like? It was the first time anyone had ever asked me that. What did I want? And when I sat down to think and write about it, what I wanted was much simpler than my childhood dreams. It even felt, dare I say it, attainable. My dream at the time was a tiny house in the middle of nature with time for me to write and draw, time to take naps and feel rested. There was grass and woodsy walks with a dog, weekends, with my partner spent exploring trails and work that involved creativity. This takes a wrecking ball to my previous image of midlife perfection, and I needed this so badly. The awesome thing is that this kind of life is kind of what I have here in Vermont. There are a lot of these pieces that manifested in this new dream. Now that I'm here and I'm older, it feels like I'm on the other side of the middle age hump. So it's time to start getting down to it. I can feel my body slowing down. I need reading glasses now. What do I do with the rest of my time on this earth? What have I been reaching out for? What am I missing? The title of this episode is Done is Better Than Perfect. This is something I would tell people all the time on my software projects. My interns still hear this. You can put it on my tombstone along with blockchain as a scam. I've just described my personal visions of perfection, but the other side of this coin is that we all have a deadline. One day our lives will be done. And on that day, what do you want to look back and see? somebody else's dreams or yours. Maybe it's time to break that cycle. And here's the thing. Once you let go that what you do has to be perfect, it becomes more about getting it done. Instead of focusing on how your novel has to be good enough for a Pulitzer, maybe you sign up for a writing class and enjoy writing with other people or doing NaNoWriMo where you write an entire novel in November. No matter how you make it happen, I've found that to spend time doing the thing is what's important. Done is better than perfect. Doing is more important than winning. In the doing, you'll make discoveries, you'll meet people and become connected. 
you'll form bonds with your connections over the doing, and these connections will help you see things through. For myself, it's been another turbulent year, and I don't know why I bothered making any plans at all. I am really not a religious person, but the phrase, we make plans, God laughs, resonates strongly. I don't have a perfect set of gilded, illuminated pages like I thought I would. That was the goal at the beginning of this year. But I did find a local art show here in Burlington, Vermont, called The Art Hop. You pay $20, and the South End Arts and Business Association will put up to five finished works on a wall here in Burlington that are for sale. These pieces will appear on their website. And for anyone who purchases one of these art pieces, they will package it up and ship it. There are a lot of different businesses that participate in this art hop and they close down the street that goes through the south end of town, which is our arts district. I found out about this a week or two before their deadline. <laughs> I didn't have any framed art, but what I did have was an artistic practice. The first six months of this year were so hard for me. They were fraught with health issues and money struggles. And the way I would calm myself when I was feeling overwhelmed was to make circles with a pencil on paper in time with my breath. Breathing and drawing is something I've done ever since I started calligraphy. It is frequently part of my warming up practice so that I can center myself for the calligraphy. I use calligraphy strokes to make repeating ovals or shapes within shapes. I haven't been to my makerspace so much in the past six months and my gilding is for shit, but I can draw you a repeating series of ovals. So when I saw the registration deadline for the art hop a week before the deadline, I went ahead and signed up. I made what I could. Is it my most perfect art ever? <laughs> I feel extremely comfortable in definitively saying no. No, it is not. But I was able to make this art and figure out how to mount it on acid-free Bristol board with a special acid-free tape in a special way. I was able to put this mounted art into a frame and figure out how to add the D-rings to the back. Once the art was in the frame, I was able to add a wire to the back of the frame. Never mind that I left the addition of the wire to the very last minute when I delivered this to a building way at the back end of Burlington called the Innovation Center. Never mind that I had to take my art inside the Innovation Center to add the wire because it was pouring down rain. So I could not just add the wire to the back of the picture in the parking lot. And never mind that as I was wrapping the wire around the back of the frame, I was kind of freaking out because I didn't know if my freshly purchased aviator snippers, I guess that's a technical term for these things that I thought were just wire cutters. I was kind of freaking out because I had just gotten them at Lowe's and I didn't know if they were actually going to cut the wire I was wrapping in front of the women who were checking in my art for the Artists Association. The snippers did great. I was thrilled. The ladies checked it off and moved on with their day. This was messy. It was last minute, and it was literally down to the wire. But I did it. My framed art is being displayed at the art hop check it out at the link in the show notes and this includes the online show as well so you can still see the art even if you're not anywhere in the neighborhood 
if you have some extra cash to part with, <laughs> you might want to consider purchasing my non Pulitzer Prize winning, but a personal victory for me art. Done is better than perfect. Bye for now.